Hey, what's up guys? This is Gary, and this is Hot Boys Garage, episode seven. And in today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to measure the base pressure of a clutch spring. So you might be wondering, why do you wanna measure the base pressure of a clutch spring? Well, in the ATV drag racing world, and even the drag bike racing world, knowing and being able to adjust your clutch spring base pressure can net you some pretty significant gains in ET. That said, clutch spring base pressure is one of many factors that goes into clutch tuning. And clutch tuning is something that I'm still trying to learn personally. And uh, it's not really that easy unless you've got a lot of track time or you know somebody that's done a lot of testing that's willing to share that information with you. Other factors that play into clutch spring tuning are your clutch stack height, air gap, lockout weight, and some guys even use a time release lockup system where they have springs actually attached to the arms on the lockout so that the faster the motor spins, the more weight the lockup is allowed to apply to the clutch pad. And I mean, you can even go as far as your air gap versus installed height geometry. And really, they're all combination specific. They are specific to each bike and that bike's combination of gearing, tire size, paddle size, weight, and the track that you're running on. If the track surface condition is light versus heavy or tacky versus slick, it's probably all gonna affect what kind of clutch setup you're gonna use. And again, just as a disclaimer, I am very much so a novice at clutch tuning. I've tried it a little bit, but I still have a whole lot to learn. And with what I'm gonna show you guys today on how to measure clutch spring pressure, hopefully that'll get you started in the right direction for clutch tuning as well. So let's get started and see what it's all about. At the very least, here's what you're gonna need in order to test your clutch spring pressure. You're gonna need the clutch springs that you're gonna use or that you wanna test, any spring shims that you wanna test as well. You'll need a clutch spring tester, and this one here is a zero to 100 PSI simple spring tester. I think if I remember correctly, it's from Powerhouse Products. I got it off Summit Racing, and I think it was less than $100. There are a lot of different models and types of spring testers you can get. Some of them are a couple hundred bucks, and I think some of them get into the thousands of dollars. And the more expensive ones are kind of all self-contained. You don't need a vise or anything like that or a, or a measuring device. It's all built in. But again, those are pretty expensive and out of my price range. Keep in mind though that a spring tester is most accurate at its midpoint. So the midpoint of this one is about 50 PSI. And most of the clutch springs that I test are in the 30 to 60, 65 PSI range. So this one was perfect for my needs and the price was pretty decent. Next, you'll need a set of calipers and you'll definitely want pen and paper handy to write everything down. And then lastly, you're gonna need something to compress the springs. And in the video, I'm gonna show you guys three different ways of doing it. The first method will be with a simple bench vise. The second method, I'm gonna use a drill press. And then the last method is the one that I've found most repeatable. And that's using a couple of jigs that I made and putting this stuff up in my bench mill and using the mill's digital readout on the quill. All right, now that we know what all we need to get started, the first step is finding the clutch springs installed height. And I'll show you guys how to do that now. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna show you how to find your clutch spring installed height on the bench. And to do that, what I've got is my clutch inner hub here, my clutch pack, which for Honda TRX 450Rs consists of eight fibers, and seven steels. And I've got these installed right on this inner hub just like it would be in the bike. The only difference is, is in the bike you'd have a clutch basket which these fibers would sit in. So now that we've got the clutch set up just like it would be in the bike, we're gonna take the pressure plate and install it. And it just sits right down inside the inner hub and rests on this top fiber. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our calipers Turn them on, make sure they're zeroed, and we're gonna measure from the base of the pressure plate to the top of where the clutch spring bolts washer sits on. So it'll look something like this. And so for my particular application, I have a installed height of 1.0355 inches. Now again, just to show you guys where we're measuring to, we're measuring to the top of where the clutch spring bolts mount to here. This is actually part of the inner hub. And then down inside, we're actually measuring to that flat spot down there inside of the pressure plate where the spring sits. So this is actually the spring pocket of the pressure plate. So we're measuring from that spring pocket to our clutch spring mounting point with the clutch pack installed. 
and the pressure plate on. So the installed height is gonna vary by bike, it's gonna vary by clutch pack, it's gonna vary by what your stack height is, how worn your fibers are, whether or not you use a judder spring or not, it's all gonna vary slightly. And where your clutch spring installed height is at is gonna affect the base pressure that your clutch springs are applying. So really to make sure that you've got it right, you should measure it for your specific bike and application. All right, so the first method I'm gonna show you guys is how to do this in a simple bench vise. It's probably the easiest and quickest way to do this. Pretty much what you're gonna do is put your spring tester in your spring in the vise, try to center everything up as best as possible, and try to make sure that your clutch spring is centered on the spring tester like this. Then you're gonna take your calipers and set them to what your clutch spring installed height is, and lock it down with the uh, little knob here to make sure that the calipers don't move. Then you'll put the calipers on the face of the spring tester and then start spinning the vise around to compress the clutch spring until this face of the vise is at your installed height on the calipers. So for this spring, we're there. And we'll look at the spring tester and we'll take the reading and record it on our paper. Then for each different clutch spring that you wanna measure, you'll repeat the same process. Okay, so something that I wanna specifically call out here is something called coil bind. And what coil bind is, is when the spring's coils contact each other at or before the compressed height, resulting in an infinite load on the clutch pack. So what I have on the spring tester and in the vise here is a 1988 to 1989 TRX 250R clutch spring. So the installed height for a clutch spring in a 250R is much greater than it is for a TRX 450R. And in a TRX 450R, these clutch springs will cool bind before the installed height. So let's compress it to installed height and I'll show you what that looks like. So here, if I turn my caliper sideways, you can see that we're not at installed height yet for a TRX 450R. The clutch spring is maxed out, the coils are touching each other, and is pegged 100 plus PSI on the clutch spring pressure tester. So this is not good. If you're testing a clutch spring and it coil binds before installed height, don't use it. The next method I'm gonna show for testing and compressing the clutch springs is using this old Craftsman drill press. So what I've got here is a Dayton Vice. I picked this up on eBay for I think it was a little over a hundred bucks. I'll put a link to it in the video description. And in the Dayton Vice, I've got this jig that I made to fit my specific clutch spring tester. And then I've got all that underneath the chuck of the drill press centered up and it's got enough room so that the chuck of the drill press can uh, come all the way up and travel down to the clutch springs installed height. So for this method, you don't have to use a vise like this. You don't have to have a jig like this, but you'll probably want some sort of system in place to keep your clutch spring tester from moving and walking around. So for this method, you also set your calipers up at your installed height and lock it down with a knob, just like we did before. Put your calipers on the face of the clutch spring pressure tester and you'll use your drill press to compress the spring down until you hit installed height. Take your pressure measurement, record it, and move on to the next. The last method I'm gonna show is using the Precision Matthews bench mill. And I'll show you guys kind of what I have set up here. Down below on the mill table, I've got a Shars vise. In the vise, I've got some parallels set up along with a parallel keeper. And all that is squaring up this jig that I had made specifically for my clutch spring tester. And this thing just kind of sits right in here, fits right down in. It keeps it from moving around. And then up above, I've got this other piece that I made. It's got a three quarter inch shank and I've got that installed in the three quarter inch collet. And then what this allows me to do is just take a clutch spring and kind of slip it right up on here. And it's got a shoulder to keep the clutch spring squared up and moving true. And then off video, I set this up to where this guy here is centered and directly above the center point here. Now what I'm gonna do is set the digital readout on the quill to where I need it so it'll show me where the installed height is. Now to figure out where I need to stop the quill, I'm gonna set the digital readout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down all the way to where the end of the spring jig is just barely touching the face of the spring tester. And I'm gonna zero the digital readout on the quill. And I'm gonna bring it back up. So then I also have to factor in the height of this shoulder area here. And I went ahead and measured that off camera with my calipers. And the height of that shoulder ended up being 0.3185 inches. So if I take my installed height of 1.0355 inches and I subtract the height of that shoulder, which is 0.3185 inches, that means when my quill reads 0.717 inches, I'll be at my installed height and I can take the reading. So I'm going to do that now.
and you just rinse and repeat. Here's a quick shot of all the springs that I tested today side by side so you can kind of see a comparison of what they look like in the various uncompressed heights and their coil thicknesses. From left to right, you've got the uh, Honda TRX 450R and CRF 450R dirt bike spring. Next is the 86 to 87 Honda TRX 250R quad spring. The green one is a 2010 to 2015 Raptor 700R and also 2007 to 2013 Yamaha YZ450F dirt bike spring. And then the yellow spring all the way to the right is a Yamaha Banshee spring, 1987 through 2001. And these are all OEM springs. Two on the left are OEM Honda and the two on the right are OEM Yamaha. All right as always I try to show all of my data in these videos. So here's the comparison between the various springs and the various ways of compressing those springs. And again all the springs that I tested were OEM Honda and OEM Yamaha springs. Their part numbers are under each one on the left there. So in closing I would recommend finding a method that gives you the most repeatable and most consistent readings. For me the that would definitely be the jig setup that I have in my bench mill. It's proven to be very consistent. Each time I mock everything up and I put a spring in, I know that it's gonna be right relative to all the other measurements that I've done with it. The vice method is okay. My vise is kind of a cheap vise from Harbor Freight. And as you turn the vise in, it kind of walks around. And I think that might put a little bit of a side load on maybe the clutch spring or the clutch spring tester. I'm not real sure. It's been somewhat repeatable, somewhat consistent. And then the drill press method, it's okay as well, but it is kind of hard to see how far down I need to come in order to get to the installed height. So at any rate, hopefully this is enough information to get you started in clutch tuning. And with testing spring pressures, and everything else that goes along with clutch tuning, I'd really recommend creating a baseline that you can always go back to if things don't work and just write everything down as far as what works, what didn't work, and that should help you improve. Also, there's a really good thread on the Banshee HQ, Banshee headquarters forums on clutch tuning. It's, uh, it's a pretty long read, but it has a lot of good information in it. Reading through that thread is kind of how I got started and wanted to learn how to tune a clutch. So if you're interested in reading that, I'll put the link to that thread in the video description. All right, so that's it for episode seven. I hope you guys learned something. As always, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. And in between videos, you can follow me on social media at Hot Boys Racing on Instagram. And on Facebook, just search for Hot Boys Racing. I'll put links to both of those in the video description. And stay tuned for more content. Thanks for watching.